G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. I'm Jesse. And I'm Drew Z. And today we're going to be giving you Just, Just the, the Tips. tips. Nice. Cool. G'day guys, welcome back to uh, Just The Tips. I say welcome back to, but this is kind of the first episode of this new style format for my weekly tippings video, which I've been doing for, for years now, except now we've recruited the very young and handsome Druzy. How are you, mate? Not young or handsome, but I'm doing well, Jesse. So as you can imagine, guys, in today's video, we're going to be going through the upcoming round, going through our tips for that round, we keep keeping score throughout the year. Um, yes, we'll be sir. doing a little upset of the round each week as well. And of course, if you want to take part as well, you can join our True Footy Tipping Competition, which you can find. I'm going to pin the comment with the invite link, as well as the AFL Fantasy League that we had going last year. There's an invite code to that as well. I believe if you were part of the tipping competition last year, that will roll forward and you can still be part of it. Uh, you don't have to do anything, but just in case, all the links for joining our comps are in the description below, so go check that out. I was going to say, another segment we're going to be doing every week is the multi of the week. Yes, that's true, Druzy. So you are going to be doing a $1 multi pretty much every week on the games you think will yes. come out. So obviously nine games, so I'll be tipping my pick for each week. Hopefully, eventually I can hit a nine. Um, Story of my life. But, you know, I'm not going to say who I'm betting with. We'll get through to the segment eventually, but if any betting sponsors are out there potentially watching, this is a good time to sponsor it. But, anyway. Nice, he's the business side. Yeah, mate, it's really like intellectuals and that. So, <laughs> like, but no, I've just got a gambling addiction that I'm trying to cover up, let's be honest. So, of course, this is going to be the weekly preview vid of sorts. We're going to talk about the upcoming games, but... We're also very excited to announce that on Drewzy's channel, we're going to be doing a weekly review of each round called the Drew Footy Show. So if you haven't subscribed to Drewzy, go do that now. You can go take part in the weekly vids, uh, have questions put forward to us each week. And on, uh, you know, early in the week, we're going to sort of review the previous round. So between the two channels, there's heaps of footy content coming. So make sure you subscribe to both of us. Also, I do need to say that this video is brought to you by True Footy sponsors, Manscaped, the global leaders in ball shaving equipment. Uh, in all seriousness, they provide some of the most elite premium ball shaving and men's grooming um, equipment as well. So you can get the Lawnmower 3.0 with a discount of 20% off and you get free shipping simply if you use the code TRUEFOOTY20. So make sure you go to manscaped.com, check out their elite products and with that code you get 20% off and uh, it's a pretty good deal, Jersey. I don't think your sponsors would be very happy with the Dirty Sanchez on your lip at the moment, Jesse. Yes, thank you for noticing. I do have a big dirty stash going on at the moment. See how long that lasts. I might add a mullet to the mix, but I don't mix and match what I shave my face with with what I shave my body with because that's just nasty. So I use an actual shaver on my face and then I use Manscaped's Elite products on the rest of my body. And they've also got some cool things like a crop reviver, which is a bit of a ball deodorant. It's been a very hot summer here in Perth. Uh, so, you know, heaps of products available for you to peruse. But enough stalling and talking about balls. Let's get into round one. Okay, so the season's obviously going to kick off with the typical season opener between Richmond and Carlton at the MCG. Last year, I remember it being so eerie that they played it in front of an empty stadium. And of course, Richmond got the chocolates that game as well. I remember they started really well, torched Carlton early, and Carlton came back. Um, the Tigers, in terms of their preseason, they just knocked off Co uh, Collingwood by six points, in which Jaden Short had like... 43 disposals, 35 kicks, and 171 fantasy points. Um, absolutely tore it up. And uh, for the Blues, they went down to St. Kilda in their preseason game. They've obviously had a few recruits this year with um, Zach Williams and Adam Sard in particular. Although, sadly, Zach Williams will be unavailable with suspension. Druzy, Richmond have won the last 10 clashes between these two teams. Is this the year that Carlton finally get the chocolates? 11 in a row for Richmond, Ooh, I reckon. Stinky. Nah, it's a pretty safe call to go for. I mean, one day it will have to break, but... Richmond are just too strong. I think Colin will probably be more competitive than they've shown in more recent years. Pl probably play like three quarters instead of one or half a quarter. Um, but yeah, Richmond too strong for me in this one. Richmond by 
33 points. Ooh, hefty. We know how good Richmond is. The question mark a little bit on Carlton is uh, to what extent are they going to rise up the ladder this year? I think we all agree they're stronger than last year. So the arguments for them giving Richmond at least a scare in this game are strong considering, you know, they did well against them last year. Richmond are also vulnerable early in the season. That being said, I'm going to agree with you. Richmond by 21 points. Next up, another repeat of last year. Collingwood are hosting the Bulldogs at Marvel Stadium. The Trelaw off, as I've heard a few people call it. Have you? No, no one says that. As we touched on, Collingwood went down narrowly to the Tigers in their preseason game. And then the Dogs obviously toppled Melbourne in uh, what was a pretty good game from their standards. They, uh, they torched Melbourne, who were another team hoping to make the finals. Bont went nuts, kicked three goals, and a lot of their midfield guns pretty much fired. This time last year, Collingwood absolutely torched them, but the narrative around these two teams is kind of swapped now. Exactly. Well, optimism is around the dogs, uh, even though I tipped the dog last year and they proved me wrong. Um, and a lot of people are tipping Collingwood to drop down the ladder this year. Druzy, what's your opinion on these two teams? Who's going to be better in 2021 and who's going to win this game? In terms of this game, I think it's the best game of the round. Collingwood have a lot to prove coming off the back of you know, so much potential in the last few years and all the adversity they've faced in the off-season. I mean, everything's mounting against them. It'll be a real game to test the character of Collingwood and then obviously the Bulldogs with probably the most stacked list in the competition at the moment. I'll go with the Bulldogs by... I think it'll be a close game, but I see the Bulldogs running away by 24 points. I like it. This is kind of a 50-50 game and it should have been last year, um, but this year, genuinely, it's, it's much harder to pick. I've been pushing the narrative this offseason that I think Collingwood is going to be better than people expect. They're a contender this year. I think that'll start in round one, and they'll beat the Bulldogs by eight points. You're not huge on the Bulldogs this season, are you? Oh, I don't have a strong argument for them slipping down. I just kind of picked them as my roughie. But nonetheless, I do think Collingwood are just an underrated team. If the Bulldogs finish top six, it doesn't shock me, even though I predicted them to miss the eight. That was kind of just a ballsy call. Mm -hmm. Um wouldn't surprise me if they win this game, but I think Collingwood will win. Next up, we have your boys, Jeruzzi. Melbourne are hosting Fremantle at the MCG. This is probably one of the more like exciting games for me as a neutral. Looking forward to uh, round one. I think this game will be quite a doozy. The Demons, as I touched on, had a poor preseason outing with uh, not only a 39-point loss to the Dogs, but a lot of injuries as well. One of those teams that are harder hit by injuries at the moment. Uh, Viney's going to miss round one. They've got no Ben Brown, of course. And Brayshaw, May, Melksham, and Salem are all on tests. Hopefully, they're all available but there's obviously still a bit of a question mark there. And I think the fortunes in this game could swing on availability. We saw Fremantle were pretty promising in the Derby, although I think avenues to goal still a concern. And now Mickey Walters is out for, what, four to six weeks. Yep. What, what are your instincts around this game? Again, you said it pretty perfectly. Defence, rock solid. Midfield, rock solid. We've lost our two best forwards in Rory Lobb and Michael Walters. Uh, Michael Frederick looked really damaging in that game against West Coast. I think he kicked two or three. Yeah, 100 um, fantasy points as well, which yeah. shocked me. So we've lost him along with a couple other players. Um, but, you know, we beat Melbourne last year quite comfortably. We are in the driver's seat for the, all that game. Melbourne were fatigued at the end of the season, I think. But they had a lot to play for. We showed up and we beat them. It's a hard one to tip because every time I tip Frio, we lose. Um, so for that sake... Oh, can I tip against Frio? You, I want to tip may. against Frio. You may. I'll tip Melbourne, but on the multi, I've gone with Frio. But Melbourne by seven points. I uh, I have concerns over how Fremantle is going to keep the goals. But that being said... I think the exuberance they're showing at the moment, I've just got a good feeling about them. I think Melbourne finishes higher, so I'm not hating on Melbourne, but I actually think there's going to be an upset this week. Fremantle is going to win by 11 points. I like it a lot. Next up, we've got Adelaide hosting Geelong. Uh, two sides at opposite ends of the spectrum uh, this year. Adelaide coming off their first ever wooden spoon and just had their absolute cheeks clapped by Port Adelaide. I think in the preseason game, they were missing a few key players, but again, I just look at their, their youth and it's still a bit raw for me. I think Adelaide's going to have a long year ahead um, and they're coming up against the Geelong side that uh, kind of coasted in their preseason game, nearly lost to the Dons. But obviously, we've talked about how star-studded they are as well. In this game, Adelaide at home, do you give them a bit of a sniff at all? Nope. Next, Geelong by 49 points. It is hard to imagine. I think Adelaide are one of those teams that play with a bit of spirit when they're up and about. We saw at the end of last year, they won the last three games. Uh, you, there's a small chance they upset Geelong. It would be a bit of a bombshell, though. I'm going to say Adelaide... Uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm going to say Geelong win by 35 points. Next up, we got Essendon versus Hawthorne at Marvel Stadium. And this is a bit of a doozy, this one, because they're two sides sort of pegged to rebuild this year, so I'm quite intrigued by it. And you can catch us live on the True Footy live stream this week, live from True Footy headquarters. We're going to be live streaming, uh, I think it's 4.30 Perth time, 6.30 Melbourne time. Something like that. Yeah, something when like that. When the game starts. Yeah, when the game starts, hop on. Uh, we're going to be there. But um, obviously, the Dons are tipped to sort of 
fall off the the what's the word the ledge this year. Ledge of the <laughs> sounds bleak. Pretty promising form in their scratch. He kicked nine goals, eighteen against Geelong, and should have arguably beat them. When you kick nine goals, eighteen, you probably should have won the game. The midfield is starting to develop. You had uh, obviously um, young Zachy Merritt tear it up with thirty-seven posies, but Parish and Caldwell kind of did well as well. And the forward line combo of Hooker, Wright, and Jones looked promising at times, but it does need time to gel. Obviously, with no Joe Danaher there. By contrast, Hawthorne torched a North side that are arguably going to finish in the bottom two this year. And Hawthorne still proving they have the ability to beat up on those teams. Lots of optimism for Hawthorne, especially with the young guys, Kaczynski and Brockman, tearing it up in the preseason game. Long story short, Jeruzzi, which team are you more optimistic about this year? As a Hawthorne fan, you're always going to have faith that you know, you're know you a part of a very successful organisation that's done it very recently. Um, Essendon, when was the last time they were in the top eight? It's been a fucking long time. 2019. Tw- what? Yeah. 2019? Elimination final oh, against yeah. West Coast. When was the last time Essendon won a final? 2000, the grand final. There you go. Yeah, Essendon have a lot of promise. I can see this game going either way. It's one of those, like, one of three games this round that I'm really looking forward to. I'll tip Hawthorne, though. I agree. I think that Essendon will finish higher um, because I think their list is better than what people think. But Hawthorne, when they click, they are hard to beat. It doesn't matter where they are on the ladder. They're always going to have these games where they inexplicably torch someone. I'm feeling good about them round one. I think they're going to beat the Dons and they're going to win this game by 18 points. Next up, we've got another one-sided affair. Brisbane is hosting Sydney at the Gabba. Obviously, Sydney finished bottom four last year and Brisbane uh, you know, went out in a home prelim, which was a disappointing end, but obviously they're still one of the strongest teams of the comp. Unfortunately, had their preseason season by an ACL injury to Cam Rayner, but they did unleash Joey Danaher, who cooked three, and you can sort of see how that dynamic's going to work going forward. Um, and Sydney, by contrast, had a lot of young debutants. I think, uh, not debutants, obviously it's preseason, but Campbell played, uh, Golden played, and um, Logan McDonald also debuted, so a lot of youth in that list. Druzy, is this an absolute pumping waiting to happen, or do you think this is going to be a competitive game? Just like me losing my virginity, pumping waiting to happen. But yeah, again, two teams that are just in completely different levels of development. Um, Brisbane will be very hungry to cement their place in the top four again this season. Uh, They're going to hit the ground running, I think, and win comfortably 30 seven points. Yeah, I tend to agree. Uh, Swan's obviously going to have no Buddy Franklin as well. He's got under under an injury cloud. I'm going to say the Lions by 39. And just when you thought we were done with the potential cheek clapping games, you've got North now hosting Port Adelaide, uh, and North are paying $4.65 to win this game. So you can see how uh, heavily favoured Port Adelaide are going into this, even though it's in Melbourne. Um, you've got the potential wooden spooners this year against potentially the Premiers this year. Port Adelaide, one of the strongest teams on paper with both their youth and their experienced players. Like, very, very good good. Um, North got touched up in their preseason game, as I said, by Hawthorne, um, although they've still got a lot of youth they're sort of getting games into. I think it's going to be a slow and steady um, sort of season for North this year, even though they've recruited someone like Jaden Stevenson, who I'm a big fan of, you know, coming up against a very mature port side and, you know, the young guys they've got are very fucking good already. Same question sort of again, to what extent can North sort of match it with a much more mature side that could potentially bully them? Yeah, no, they're not going to. Port finished off with the ladder. North Melbourne finished just about bottom. Um, new coach as well. They're going to take a while to adjust this style. Port know their structures. Port Adelaide understand their dynamic as a side much more than North Melbourne do, I think. I think they're going to run rings around them and win very comfortably. I'll go for a 60-point battery. Yeah, and of course, Port Adelaide, a strong team last year, minor premiers, and they've added two pretty good players in the preseason in Orazio and Alia Alia, who played pretty good roles in their preseason game as well. So mm-hmm. I'm going to agree with you, Port Adelaide by 43 points. Second last game of the round is a much more evenly matched contest, in my opinion. you got G- GWS versus St Kilda. GWS are actually the favourites at $1.72 here, which might surprise some people. St Kilda obviously won a final when GWS came something like 12th last year. GWS seething after a poor season last year. I think they didn't demonstrate how good they are. I think that was clear. Uh, but on top of that, losing guys like Jeremy Cameron, Zach Williams, Aiden Kaur, and probably a bunch of others that I'm forgetting as well. Uh, Jackson Haley left the club for free as well. They beat a young Sydney side in their preseason game, so not a lot to go off. I mean, no preseason game really is. But I did see that Tanner Braun kicked four goals in his first performance as well. So, um, yeah, early contender for a Rising Star nomination, I think, as Caden well. Caden predicted that. Caden predicted... Did he? Yeah. He yeah, nice. The, to win the Rising Star. That is a good call. I've got him in my fantasy team now. Um, and then you look at St. Kilda, who had a pretty impressive four-goal win over a much improved Carlton side. Both of these sides have their injury concerns, particularly in the ruck. I think, was it Marshall and Ryder are both missing for St. Kilda? And then Max King got hit in the head by a golf ball um, from, like, point-blank range as well. So he got concussed and is missing Jeez. this game. They've probably got good opponents in that GWS are also missing Proust, um, and they've got like Briggs 
Diggs or Matty Flynn to ruck yeah. for them. I don't even know much about those players. So, Druzy, you were saying before we recorded this video, you think these two sides are moving in opposite directions. I think GWS, there's only so much talent you can let slip before you start to feel it. I think Dockers are a good example of that. Like, losing Lockie Neal, like Chris May, we didn't unlock his full potential when he was one of the best players in a great Collingwood side a few years ago. Um, Brad Hill, Ed Langdon, it takes its toll eventually. And when you're losing, a, how many times did Jeremy Cameron win the Coleman at GWS? One. One. He won it once. But <laughs> nonetheless, the best forward in the competition, arguably. Yeah, they're not going to be as competitive as they could have been had they have kept all of that talent on their list. And I've only seen improvement from St Kilda from year to year. Uh, GWS dropped off a lot last year, losing their best player. I just think that's a simple equation. I reckon Saints win this pretty comfortably. I agree that the Saints are in a really good position, but I... I'm doing this thing this year where I'm just don't want to write off teams that other people are writing off. I think GWS are still very strong, and I think a lot of the reason they struggled last year was probably the mental side of it. Yeah. Um, you know, things with like someone like Cornelio having a terrible year. He was one of the best midfielders in the comp the year before. So I, th I will back them to improve. I know they got no Whitfield. He's got a liver infection or some yeah. sort of like thing That's going on there. Keep infection. Oh, I think it says liver on the injury list, but okay. yeah, I'm not 100% sure. But either way, um, so missing some players, but I do think in front of a home crowd, GWS are going to pull an upset here. And I, I was a bit of a meme last year because I never tipped St. Kilda. Um, so they're going to hate this. I think St. Kilda is a better team. I have them higher on the ladder. Yeah. But GWS win at home by nine points. Final game of the round is my beloved Eagles coming up against the Gold Coast Suns, uh, who last year torched the Eagles by something like 46 points in the restart after the COVID thing, which is, you know, a very bad memory for me. That was an absolutely horrible game, but uh, circumstances are different now. In terms of the preseason, the Eagles sort of cruised to a bit of a win against Fremantle, who put up a, a pretty good performance as well, and I think Duggan and Ryan were probably our best performers in that game. Um, some injury concerns. Yo's going to be out for most of the season, I reckon. Um, yeah, not confirmed yet, but the, he's got Osteatus Pubis. Luke Shuey's obviously done his hammy as well. So the midfield's a little bit undermanned. Um, and, you know, the Gold Coast midfield, even though it's young, I could see guys like Raul actually doing quite well. I think that's the Eagles' vulnerability in this game. The Suns were pretty good in their preseason outing. They uh, came up against the Lions. were actually five goals up at one point. Then they rested Sam Collins and things started to sort of shift. But um, there's obviously a lot of talent in that team. They're dangerous early. To what extent do the Suns have a chance of a ma massive upset this week? Yeah, it would be a huge upset. Obviously, given that the last game West Coast lost to the Gold Coast was at Metricon. Completely different environment. Given how dominant West Coast are at Optus, again, with the experience they have, Gold Coast coming over here, they I don't think they've ever won. Oh, they the, have not. At they've never beaten West Coast, but yeah. they've beat. They might have beaten you. Yeah, they beat us at, at uh, Subi a couple uh, of yeah, years yeah. back. No, I, I think this is a no contest. I reckon West Coast win quite convincingly. We'll go West Coast by. 41 points. I feel the opposite. I think Gold Coast are always dangerous early in the season. I think they're going to drop away later. This is a terrible time to get them. I think they're going to sniff a bit of a win here because of the, what happened last time. Um, and there's a lot of optimism going into the year. That being said, I think the Eagles will also have a bit of a chip on their shoulder, not to repeat the mistake of 12 months ago. I think the Eagles will just be too strong, but I think it's going to be a very close game. It's probably going to be a scrap. I'll say the Eagles win by 10 points. Jesse, we'll go an upset of the round. Who do, you, who do you see pulling off an upset that's going to ruin my multi? So I kind of already tipped Fremantle, who is an underdog, but I'll say the upset of the round is the team we just talked about, the Gold Coast Suns beating the Eagles. I think it's possible. I think You're it's too possible. pessimistic. No, I think, it, I think it's... Well, maybe it is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go the Swans beating the Lions. I like, really? I like the Swans a lot, <laughs> despite what I just said you, fucking two you, minutes ago. I was going to say, you emphatically ruled them out. Yeah. <laughs> I think out of all the underdogs and like on terms of what is the biggest upset that's most likely to happen, I think Sydney could maybe contest Brisbane. All right, so before we end that video, uh, how's the old multi looking? Multi's looking juicy. It's paying sixty six, sixty five to one dollar. Nine games, obviously every game. So I've gone Richmond, Bulldogs, Fremantle, Geelong, Hawthorne, Brisbane. Port Adelaide, St. Kilda, and West Coast. Juicy. Sweet, guys. That wraps up our tipping video. As always, I welcome you to add your tips in the comment section below, or if you're part of the competition, maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you just add a comment anyway because it helps the algorithm. But either way, we hope to see you on the battlefield. That is ESPN Footy Tips. Uh, don't forget to also check out our sponsor, manscaped.com, for 20% off using the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you. We hope to join you in the Essendon-Hawthorne clash later this week. Saturday.